love your third final. <laughs> Not sure, it was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Not true that's or awesome, though. No. I couldn't get rid of that one. Yeah, that's awesome. awesome Welcome to Saber Talk. I'm here with Harris and Gabe again, and we're going to talk lightsabers. Um, so we have a couple of things we wanted to bring up, and one of them is Harris's copper work to his, um... We're start with that. To his saber, yeah, because I think that's pretty cool. And you have one piece hooked up with just some tape right now, but that's because you're waiting for some special bunny ears to arrive from Tim. Are you allowed to say, um, anything about the bunny ears? Yeah, I don't think it's said. It's not a major secret. Um, <laughs> um, I went with the, uh, copper on this saber just to add a little... A little bit of flair to it um, and I kind of down here I went with the tube the copper tube which uh, this was the piece of it right here that was that was about the rest that I used right mm -hmm. there um, just some copper I think it's about uh, one inch one and a half inch diameter inside and uh, cut it and I cut it around and I kind of went for up here to the um, the Obi-Wan uh, the first and second movie saber look up here with the cutout and the second secondary piece underneath it. Um, and then down here, I used my uh, brass cover tech to hold it on. And what was really cool is this kind of holds it on down here with the one brass cover tech screw. And then up here, it wasn't sitting right. And you were telling me a few weeks ago, we were here, we were talking about the copper work, how you want to do the levels to build them up. Well, I kind of, I didn't want to steal your idea. I wanted to do something like more original. And it's kind of hard to tell on camera, but in person, it almost slopes down to a tighter fit down here. And then what I did is up here, I actually tried to think of what I could use to build it up a little bit. Mm -hmm. And I actually tried cutting a few little tiny, like maybe like quarter inch pieces of copper. Like some kind to, of shim or something. Like a shim, exactly, to, to build it up. And that wasn't working. I would have had to have built too many. And uh, so then I got a, a brainstorm. I remember back when, when I was building some plumbing pipe sabers back in the day. Uh, I don't know if anybody, any old timers here remember lead sabers from the big yellow box. Do you remember that? That was a website way back. I'm going back 15 years, lead sabers from the big yellow box. And what that was, there were six or seven sabers and it was saber tutorials. They were non-functioning, non-working, but they uh, actually metal hilts, metal hilts. And they told you, gave you a parts list and everything. And you could go to Home Depot or Lowe's and, and build yourself some replica sabers. And I still have some of those put away at home that I made 15 years ago. But one of the ideas that they used was to build up that inner tube so that the outer tube would fit snugly. So what I did is I took a couple feet of electrical tape and I just cut thin strips out. And I built this up in here till it was nice and thick. And it, the, the strip only goes, you know, it's like a little quarter inch strip. Because like the copper pipe's a little bit A little bit wider. Diameter. Yeah. And what it adds is it adds a little nice degree of separation. I don't know if you guys can see it, but yeah. I don't know if they can see it on home. Yeah, it, it's like almost for the next time that, that you do something like that, you can actually... Right here. Use what it, what it does, which is leave the copper sitting above the underneath part. Uh, by a little bit to have vented sound holes um, oh. underneath there, right? So like, uh, well, the, I could do that. I could still punch a hole yeah, into so underneath like on this the, on the main hilt section. Maybe there'd be three holes. That's not, like right under that here. Would, That's like, not a bad idea. Underneath. That's um, actually a really good idea. Yeah, we might have to fire up the drill press tonight. Yeah. <laughs> um, but then I, uh, I, I built on that, and one of the things I, I also like on this, I kind of went with the uh, the copper kind of brings it out to that trim ring. I think that's a trim ring one or two on the custom saber shop. And I have one here at the bottom also. But what it did was it gave that one at the, at the top there, gave that trim, middle. take a look, it gave oh, yeah, that trim okay. ring a flush sitting with the copper. Yeah. So it kind of went together nice. And then what I wanted to do, I really liked the difference of the brass versus the copper here. So I wanted something to finish off the upper end of the saber. And what I did with this, I'll remove the blade, what I did with this, I kind of gave it a little kind of V-shape to it with a little curvature to it. And on the front, I kind of brought it up a little bit to bring it over the edge of the 
You can see that there on film over the original shroud. And that gives it a two-tone on the outer shroud. But then when you look at it in the back, it's more of a solid piece, which kind of for me is a double, double bubble because uh, I've dropped a saber before and I bent the shroud. So what's mm -hmm. nice is this will actually also protect the original shroud. And this little copper piece, I can always, if oh, it bends, right. you could probably do that. I can do that. Yeah, I did that in a night or two by yeah. hand. I did that with the Dremel and some files and by hand and a lot of, you know, a lot of sandpaper and polishing it up. So if I ever was to destroy that piece, I could probably create another one. And that would actually save that inner yeah. silver shroud if I ever dropped it face yeah, down. That's true. The underneath one is more, more important. Than yeah, more definitely. Because we did a lot of work on those with those three evenly spaced screws. Mm -hmm. That took us a couple hours here. Um, I've been posting pictures of the saber as it's getting done. And a lot of people who uh, are fans of the show have been watching it and they're posting on there. They're like, oh, that was the saber you and Mad Cow were, uh, <laughs> you, you, and, you and Space Window were working on. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Does yeah, anybody yeah, have any it. ideas on what, to, on what to do to it? Like, What's that? Does anyone have any ideas that they're emailing you? Like, what one to do one to fellow it gave me, I forget who it was. Uh, one I'm getting a lot of people asking me questions about it. One fellow um, kind of gave me an idea to take the, uh, the, the, um, the choke part and drill some holes going vertically through, evenly spaced, and maybe some brass rotting coming through the choke part. As like look like structural supports oh, on those. Crazy, yeah. I thought about that and I, I kind of like that. Um, the only thing I'm not sure if I want to go that route is that that's Integrity. a great choke point mm. for when I'm holding oh, the right. saber or when I'm spinning the saber. Yeah. That's a great choke point right there. So I'm afraid if I do that, then that might interfere with some of that. That added right with there. the bunny ears you'll be getting on too. That could be a conflict with. I don't yeah, know. a lot of people don't like the bunny ears because they they don't like any. They like a nice. I mean, if you, if you know how to maneuver and, and spin it where the bunny ears are not an issue, um, then you're fine. But if you're going to have the bunny ears and then have those little bracket things, it might be an inconvenience of mm. a discomfort. Might be a little much. A yeah. little bit much of I, discomfort. I, but I also cool. don't want it to get... In the brass, it would look kind of cool, right? I, I don't want it to get too gaudy either. You know yeah. what I mean? And I'm afraid that I don't want to, you know... I don't want it to look like a pimpmobile going it. down the street. You know what I mean? <laughs> I mean, uh, you know, I don't want fuzzy dice hanging yeah. from it. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it we're, you know, it's saber. it's a work in progress, and we're getting there. One of the things that uh, Gabe set me up with a fellow that does a lot of powder coating for us, um, yeah. liquid powder coats. Uh, yeah, liquidpowdercoats.com. Liquidpowdercoats.com. He does uh, rims and stuff like that. He does a lot of car work and custom motorcycle work, and he's been doing a couple couple uh, saber parts for me on a couple sabers that I've sold on private commissions. So now I'm trying to lock him down. I want to take this um, this uh, control box and I want to make that um, into a like a black or a black chrome powder coat. Mm -hmm. And then it has the uh, two new gold buttons on here from TCSS. Mm -hmm. And I have the two red kill keys and this is my little, uh, just talking to Cad Bain online. I gave him a little detail how to make my rice port kill key. Um, so that's a little now, proprietary. I built that myself. Once you get the bunny ears bolted, then that's what's going to hold this in place. Yeah, exactly. Right now it's held on with just a piece of tape, just for kind of to looks to see how it looks. Once I get the bunny ears, the bunny ears will sit on top, and they will bolt onto the inside shroud. Mm -hmm. And uh, and that where the bunny ears very towards the top or more in the middle. I'm going to try like I'm going to try and go traditional. It's uh, you know detail here. Um, like a standard Graflex, the bunny ears on a standard Graflex are typically centered with that center ring. Oh, right, yeah. So I'm going to kind of try and do the same kind of thing, center it maybe, maybe, maybe on the back, that. center with the metal ring yeah, in let the me, front. Yeah, let me see where that would go through. Like right, in the, right centered with mm -hmm. that, you know. And what I kind of tried to do, I hope I did, but I kind of hope I left enough meat on here because I don't want the bunny ears hanging off of this. I want the bunny ears kind of like dead center yeah. on the copper part. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think yeah. It, it'll be fine. I'm hoping. Looks like there's enough room there. Yeah. And then that little point, see the point? Feel that point with your thumb at the bottom? That, I kept, it was like every time I hold the saber, it was nice and really pointy. It was like a needle. You, you so kept, I, you I, had, like I took it down. down. Yeah, I, I had to file it down. It kept sticking my thumb. <laughs> I got about three or four holes Can in you my thumb. Spinning that, like that start like that. <laughs> Lined up pretty good. You think? It's, it's very centered. Nice job. That looks great. Yeah. I like I like the look of uh, copper, and Harris actually brought me this piece of copper, which yep. is the remainder. Um, 
So thank you. This is awesome. This is like three years worth of copper stuff that I use. Yeah, it's normally, all yours, uh, man. Yeah, I only use a little bit at a time, but um, it's all yours. Copper's copper's pretty cool. As as much as I build sabers, um, I, I've said this before, but Anthony is to me. Anthony's a rock star to me. He's the man, and he helps us out a lot. Um, so it's the least I can do is to pick up a piece of copper. Thanks, yeah. dude. It's awesome. Yeah. No sweat, man. Yeah, I didn't even think of you know. Um, you said you had had a piece for copper because I, I had used up a, another friend brought me a piece of you copper. You had a piece and you were running low well on yeah, it. Yeah, I was like kind of using it, so I was like not considering any new copper designs. Uh, but now I can, you, you know, it, think of different copper stuff. So that's pretty it, cool. Man. Yeah, I'm sure your brain's already. <laughs> he's looking at his brain's already working <laughs> with all the projects you want to do. Yeah, I'm gonna do the next lead in here. Gabe's got something new to show to everybody. Again, yes. thanks to Anthony. <laughs> yes, I can't thank Anthony enough for working on my saber. The Keeper of Peace, the KOP. Um, we just installed the Crystal Focus 6, mm -hmm. right? With a, with a color extender in it. The PLI. CEX? Yeah. The PLI in there. It's got a BBW in there, tri -Cree, And this thing is lovely. <laughs> nice. Nice and bright. Yeah, it's got a beautiful choke on there. Um, Harris and I actually designed this uh, saber on uh, uh, Custom Saber Shop uh, website. On the MHS Builder. On the MHS Builder, yeah. Um, it's it's funny, I, after I put this together and we decided on colors, had it come in, Harris put it together, I ended up posting a picture of it and someone said it looks like uh, R2-D2 and uh, C-3PO had a baby. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I didn't think about that. I was like, oh shoot, you're right. <laughs> the colors and all, but... I didn't have that in mind, but it's actually pretty cool. Um, I wanted a sleek looking saber, the, the nice thin choke for spinning and, and things like that. Every time um, I think of saber dueling, I always think of you know all the flash and, and, and flare of spins and stuff like that. So I wanted something comfortable. I didn't want anything. I don't like the, the too much the boxes in the way and things mm -hmm. like that. Not that I'm against it because I, I will eventually own one um, like that, but... Um, I just wanted it clean as possible in this area for spinning and stuff, and um, uh, so I'm very, I'm very glad, I'm very excited that I finally got my baby back. It's been several uh, months, I would say, right? It's been a few months. I have yeah. three, uh, I have three um, Crystal Focus 7.5s out that I, I pretty much destroyed over the uh, the time of building a few, and uh, they're out for repair. Michael, please get them back to me. <laughs> <laughs> please. Yeah. So, so. Um, um, Anthony um, mentioned to me he had a, a I guess a, a loner what would you call it <laughs> an extra uh, crystal focus that uh, he was willing to to install in here um, and, and, and get this puppy going because I was just dying I mean it's my only saber <laughs> right now so I was just desperate to get a working saber in my hands again to, to go back to uh, you did have two others but you sold them off back in the day yeah I sold them off and then uh, I was able to use that money to order me another one which was a um, the which I mentioned I think in the last show or, or so um, the crystal jade the jade fire is it yeah the crystal jade from Saber Forge weathered another with blue a, LED yeah with the 12 watt plus uh, blue is what I, I'm, I'm just a fan of the blue um and again, that saber has a little box area or something like that. The crystal oh, okay. jade, so close to the middle so, there. Yeah, so it's not. That, that's why I said um, this particular one. I wanted it clean like that because I'm not too too big a fan, but I'm not against them either. Mm -hmm. I do think and believe that crystal jade uh, saber looks hot. I, I like it the, the, the design of saber. Yeah. So that, that saber, yeah, just for the the the, uh, the sticklers in the crowd, that saber is Saber Forge's, um, you know, pseudo replica of the Mar Jade saber. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Which is a great looking piece. It's great. It saber. is. I did. I've seen. I did a whole bunch of you know reviews online, YouTube videos or whatever. Everyone else does looks on YouTube, you know. Um, and the more reviews I saw on it, the more I fell in love with the design of it and stuff. Um, mm -hmm. But I wanted to go with the uh, with the weather dark color, the darker color instead of the. Shiny you got this color. one is pristine. So yeah. Nice so to have the other one. Maybe. Yeah. So I can't cool wait. Uh, I'm, it's now we're November sixteenth, two thousand fifteen. How many weeks left? I've been, I think, nine or ten weeks wait right now. So it usually uh, takes I, about twelve got, to fourteen weeks for sure. Yeah, I got another four, out. maybe five weeks or so. I'm waiting. So <laughs> right around Christmas time. Yeah, yeah nice Christmas present. Well, it's it's a busy it's a busy time for any saber smith right now yeah, with the movie people coming people out. Be, the business is picking out. up. There's more and more interest in sabers yeah, there's now. There's no so. cards available and stuff like yeah. that. Yeah, 
Everything sold out. This one, I go. like how, like the light comes through in that emitter section. Yeah. Then you have. I had Tim red. custom mill that out. Yeah. That looks awesome. Doesn't uh, that I, look great in the blue? I like. Uh, I like that emitter, and I just felt that it needed a little something more. And uh, it already came with those little ovals kind of cut into the metal. Mm. And I, uh, I talked to Tim, and, and Tim actually uh, did some custom work on that emitter. He, he did awesome. another one for somebody that I built one also like that. Yeah. And he just opened up that hole. And, and when it's open and lit up, it really lets the yeah, light like shine the way through. it's cut looks yeah. particularly cool. Yeah, and, it's um, very cool. Tim also did the powder coating on that. Tim did yeah. all the powder coating on that one too, yeah. yes. Mm -hmm. Tim's if you want to see this... If you want to see, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. No, but if you want to see this saber up close, go right on Space Windu's YouTube page. He's got videos of it. Of you, did you do a review of this one? Here? Um, I kind of just showed yeah. all the different fonts and stuff that. Okay. That we showed off all the fonts. Just, I didn't know that. Just, just like that. testing, I didn't really talk about it. Yeah, he did a close up of it, and, and you can go through all the menu fonts and stuff, so people can see it up close and listen. Talk to about it. the PLI. Talk about what he did versus what I did. I think that's really cool. Yeah, this that was a good little detail, and and it's funny because we were talking about this on the way here. I didn't even notice it, even when you sent me the pictures. I so so <laughs> yeah so the PLI when it comes in it's just the regular you know this color uh, LEDs mm. uh, on the there clear and which is which was the original way we installed it in here um, even though we couldn't really get it to work properly um, but that was the way and so I noticed that you put a brass or gold filter lens mm. covering it's almost the like PLI a screen, I yeah, like a screen like a and I had I didn't even notice it when you sent me the picture of it. I'm like, oh, that looks awesome. And for, if if I can say this on on, on camera, it's for the potheads out here. It looks like a screen you would put in a, oh, yeah, a pot like pipe a or something. Like that. Yeah, like a brass yeah. color. Yeah, too. yeah. So I mean, it really goes with the you know, it's an accent that and goes with the the gold on here. So. I mean, kudos to Anthony too because not only did he put the brass screen in there when it's powered down, all you see is that brass screen. But you also replace the original screws, which were silver, with a couple brass screws, which look absolutely amazing. Cool, yeah. Like I think that probably Very looks cool. better when it's off. You know, yeah, oh, like detail. You the detail just pops. The, the yeah. Dress, the no, it's right. amazing. Yeah, go show it up close. It's okay? amazing. Yeah. yeah. Matter of fact, let me put the. Uh, yeah, put the kill key and show key in. lit. One of the things that I like about what Anthony did to that, and this is another thing, another attention to detail. Um, when we initially put that PLI in. That PLI was like blinding. It was so bright. It was almost too bright. It overpowered the saber. And by you diffusing it with that screen, and you so can you can filter. still see you it when it's on. You can see it perfectly. Yeah. But when it's screen. when it's on, that PLI. screen diffuses it and brings it right down to the proper color that it really makes it work on the saber. Good job. Yeah, thank you. High five. Now. High five. Yeah, I keep, like we, we talked about earlier, like I keep... Uh, so there there's a little windows around, you know? uh, cut into the emitter by uh, Tim from Custom Saber Shop. Yeah, that really looks awesome in person. Yeah, Hopefully in person looks through. sick. I'm sorry because I know the, the camera is so bright. Like, blades like, are always like, brighter like, like, in, in on camera, lights, but... Almost. Like the, the, like, the like, way it comes to a, that the color, color, yeah, it the looks like a laser gun nozzle yes. to me. So I think that's kind of, you know, yes. that looks like... I actually saw a guy a couple years ago make a... A blaster out of MHS parts. I don't know if oh, you've ever seen that. That's cool. But he I used that. that. He what used did he that. Use for the for the handle. I don't remember. It was so long ago. I, I think I it was on. Do uh, I want to do that. Something. It was like, on I the have... replica prop forms. I think I oh, saw. Okay. That. Yeah. Like I have a yeah. different idea now for my blaster core, but I always wanted to make like uh, some kind of blaster. I think with the with these new trailers coming out for the movie and the new movie coming out, and you see now you get a couple uh, glimpses of different blasters are passing off to people mm -hmm. and they're kind of cool you know what I mean I'm sure eventually Very some cool. people are going to figure out a way actually the one that, that um, Han is passing to Ray in the trailer looks like it could be made out of MHS parts it looks like yeah. there's pieces like this well you know I mean you take a, you take a saber two, and you mount it like, like this two, and you got a blaster <laughs> yeah it was almost like a sawed off shotgun with they had yeah. like two tubes you know um, <laughs> it's cool stuff yeah it's cool stuff I, I, we were touching earlier on, on the, uh, the news came out this week that they posted in a, uh, I think it was a, a display that Disney had out, or maybe it was one of their rides, that they posted a picture of the uh, Kylo Ren saber, and it's gave a little detailed description oh, right, of it, yeah. and, and underneath it said uh, to the fact that um, the, the side vents, what everybody think were cross guards, saber blades, little mini blades, were actually uh, vents, I guess. Because the blade's so unstable. Yeah, his blade's unstable, and the, the vents, that's the like the overflow, or mm. the power overflow, coming out the side of the saber. Makes sense, yeah. 
I wonder if you can use that if that in the movie th- like we'll see if that actually cuts or yeah I, th- I think it would burn probably burn? like third degree burns yeah. <laughs> said, I the way it looks like it's coming out like fire I think it would burn. actually I wanted to say one of the comments um, about this saber on one of the videos which I thought kind of rang true was that you were saying it looked like R2-D2 and C-3PO mm-hmm. had a child someone said it looked like one of the pod racers and I thought it kind of did look oh, like very it. Cool. it was the same color as like Anakin's pod yeah, racer yeah, very cool. yeah. so that's another yeah, thing yeah, it kind of yeah, looks yeah, like yeah. very cool that's cool the motor parts yeah. the jet engines stick yeah, out yeah that's funny because so. these cool. aren't things that I you know I think about or thought about while putting it together I just thought I want it thin sleek and a good easy mm. choke for spinning that was it and colors I, I chose the Blue blue's my favorite color, and I, I just thought the gold would just go as a nice accent. I actually was thinking about, uh, after, you know, one, one of the problems being an artist, and you, you, you would understand this, is you make a creation, and then you're like, damn, I really like that. I should keep <laughs> that for myself. And my wife always kills me because she's like, always, oh, you spend money on this stuff, and then you don't want to sell it after. Well, that's true because I do, you know, I, I tend to, I, I put a little emotional attachment into some of the pieces that I create. And I saw this and I fell in love with it. And like he says, his color is blue. Well, I'm, I'm into green, mm-hmm. but my color in life, my main color is red. But I don't, wanna, you don't want to, I don't want to have a Sith blade. Yeah. So I was actually thinking about duplicating that exact sabler, saber, but in, in red, but with the green blade. And then I thought, well, maybe that'd be too Christmassy. I don't know. I also think you could probably have, this would look good with the green blade. Um, like if you had blue accents and stuff like that. You think maybe, it would look good with the green coming maybe, out? Yeah, like change the, all the stuff he has brass, maybe change that. But the like the blue could work with the green blade. Like we kind of saw before we started recording, he had the photon tube in there and looked yeah. kind of cool. And we're going we're gonna to touch base on the photon tubes a little bit too. So we're going to yeah. throw them on a couple different sabers here. Yeah, I mean, it's one of the, if there's anything I wanted to say more about that, I said that someone it's said, it like, oh yeah, the other thing I want to say with um, the, the blue color that he has, this powder coating, kind of, now that I see it, uh, kind of lit up with that particular blue LED, because like, you know, like the sabers different have different LEDs, mm-hmm. different tones of blue, mm-hmm. that tone of blue actually matches like the mm-hmm. powder coating you know like the powder coating is kind of that electric blue yeah, electric blue and the blade to me when he uses the pure blue it, it looks like it matches the powder pops. coating to yeah, me you know where it's like different than if it was this led which yeah. i don't know the, the, the some kind of brand is different about it you know where it's yeah. like a, or the bin is different that it's one of the neat things i did on that saber um that, that most people don't do or you know i think ahead a little bit is um and when you're building sabers you kind of you you and i have touched base on this kind of got to think three steps ahead almost, Yeah. was uh, I, I got in touch with Tim, and Tim Tim is pretty open to do custom work, as far as I know. I mean, he charges for it, of course, but, um, you know, I talked to Tim, and there's nowhere on the uh, the, the uh, TCSS page to powder coat the control boxes. Um, okay. So I had uh, sent Tim a note about doing the custom powder coating on these two control boxes, and we did, where I have all mine into one box, mm-hmm. I have my rice port, my kill key, my activation, and my auxiliary. What we did on that, we split up the control boxes into two boxes. We made the rice port and the kill, court, kill port on one little box, and then the, uh, the round box mm-hmm. has the, uh, the, the bigger box has the, the power and the auxiliary. And we, you know, it just, the, the blue mixed with the silver just really pops. And they've actually been out of... Uh these these kill plugs for a while too. What's that? At least as far as I know, these these little kill plugs oh, are been all the different colors. I clicked on like all the different colors. Um, I, I don't think there were there was any, but I'm sure you know soon they'll become. Yeah, back he's in. he's constantly updating stuff. Like I think I think uh, like we kind of heard that the you know the photon tips are coming, right? And then other colors are going to come. So that mm-hmm. was like pretty awesome news. Yeah. Um, as far as custom saber shop goes. Um, there was it was PEXs in stock today when I looked, Power which is which is good because I think they were out of them for a while. Um, I'm yeah, with, with the crystal focuses, you don't need a power extender, right? The power I need extender it for only my LSs. You need it for your LS series. Yeah. Okay. Like I think the CF seven they did away with it, right? Seven point five, you don't need it anymore. No, I don't think you need it. Yeah. Now, if to you do want to change colors clash. with seven point five, do you need a CEX? Still? If you say again? Yeah. If you want to change colors with a CF7? You need a CEX. You need yes. a CEX. Yes. Okay, yes. Yeah. Um, 
So basically, like, like I, it's it's almost like I didn't even think about that. But the if you want to change colors, basically, and you have the CF, um, you need the CEX, and that means you need to add on like another sixty bucks. So yeah. that's al- almost something that like you know I didn't think of, but I had some extra ones that this week um, a couple people needed them, and and I sold them when I looked at how much they were. I didn't even realize because I used to kind of just buy them along with the board, mm-hmm. you know, and I didn't I didn't even like think about like that. You, you need this for the color change. I thought they kind of did yeah. away with well, that the, the, by the, the time the 7.5 I'm pretty sure the CF7 and the 7.5, I think, it has the ability to add, you have your main LED on the top of the board, mm-hmm. and then on the back of it, there are two more connection ports, or points, I should say, that you can add two other LEDs. Like when I originally set this up, like not for accents, you mean? Not for, it. It would be like for flash on in. flash. Oh, I see. Yeah, okay. but you can't mix. In other words, when I originally set this up, it was a a three. There were a, it was a tri Cree. All these terminologies get me confused. It was a tri Cree XPE two Copper Nova, is what's in there, and I custom ordered it. I did it a blue, blue, and a white. Okay. And when I initially set that up. What I did is I took the two blues and connected the negative to the positive in the middle, and then I had it coming up positive and then negative out. So when you turn, in other words, like think of it like putting two flashlights in a battery, in a, in two batteries in a flashlight. When you put two, two batteries in, you know, you're connecting the batteries positive to negative. So it's going like this, and the power's running through. Mm-hmm. Um, that is called, you would know, series, series. or parallel. Well, I think uh, you had it run parallel, before, parallel when I when I opened it up. Yeah. Okay, and and you just set it up in. I just set it up in channels. In channels, because so, that's the way you do it with the CEX. Yeah. But I had that. I had that. Um, the third, the third LED. I had the two blues, and then the third LED was the white one on there, which I had that set up as the flash on clash, mm. and I attached that to the back end of the C of the uh, the CF seven five. On a separate channel, mm. so you didn't need the PEX on this on the C-E-X? seven point the, the PF PEX. PEX. Okay. Because like if you're doing like let's say you're doing a PEX let's say you're doing um, like a nano biscuit saver, and and you want flash on clash on there, you would have to use the PEX on there, which right. is that little tiny. It's like almost the size of two grains of rice. Yeah. You know that's the PEX. You need to add that to it to run the flash on clash. Yeah. And or I, the PT crew. I used to have a bunch of them, and I ended up like running out of. I only have the one left of the saver I'm working on right now. Which They're is, tiny. Yeah. They so. were, I mean, I, I don't know how you say it. I, I have trouble saying it. <laughs> I couldn't work on this. Yeah, I like the PEX because you can take the saber as a CF or CF six and make it actually full power, um, which I always wanted. Wanted my sabers to be full power. Mm-hmm. You know, I didn't care about the flash on clash as much. Mm-hmm. Just to have all the power of the LED. Main bright. And the cool thing about these channels, when you use the CEX. Which is like what I, I always want to use the CEX. It's so awesome because it's a power extender and it's a color extender at the same time. And what you can do is, um, you know, you can push the LED past its limits if you want to. Yeah, you well, can make you sure said you safe. had that bump to twelve hundred. Well, right? Gabe said that Deanna from Vader's Vault said that his LED uh, could go to twelve hundred. The blue dice, at least. I don't. I forget what the white one could handle. But what I did was I think I kept them at like eleven eighty or eleven forty. I have to talk to you. It. I bumped mine to, to eleven fifty, mm. <laughs> and I mean it's working good so far. And I and I do have them in there with a quick connect. Yeah. So and and I build this stuff myself. So if I pop them, I mean. Well, that's the thing. It's also very easily accessible. Like if Gabe wants to drive his up to limits or whatever, um, it's just a twist off the emitter, right? And then you have access to the LED there, which yeah. we could always just change. And the cool part about the inhale LED savers is like, at least if I'm, tell me if I'm not too far off, but I think they're like 25 bucks for an LED. Yeah. So um, it's not like gonna, it's yeah, not like it's smashing your terrible. string blade and it's $500. It's just 25 bucks and get a new, or you might yeah. want to change it in the future, get a higher power. I don't know. I don't know if there's better ones. If they, know. if they, I mean, who, who, who knows? They're constantly coming out with newer stuff. Yeah. So they may come out with like, a, like I'm making up the numbers, but this might be like a, a thousand lumens. And lumen is a measuring of the brightness level. And they may come out with a, something that's like 2,000 lumens. To yeah, double I, right I think, um, do you know about this? Is the CF7, I think when it first came out, I ever, never handled a, a CF7, never saw it. But um, I think, you know, when I read through the thread when it first came out, 
Is it four channels? Is capability to do four channels? The CF7 5 three? has three channels to it, but not three, ch as far as I know, okay. I may be wrong, but it's got, like I said, it's got the one main on it, and then on the back of it, there's two other connection ports where you can run like a flash on clash, and I'm guessing like something else off of it. Okay, I'm, I'm not sure what that third one would be. Okay, so I'm thinking maybe maybe that's why I'm thinking it's four, because maybe you could put the CEX on it, and you get three channels, and then you have that fourth one underneath. Um, because I think maybe someone could correct me if I'm wrong that's watching this, but um, I think the CF 7.5 has the ability to do four channels, so you could utilize those really new LEDs. It's possible. I don't like, remember. for Gabe's LED, it doesn't matter because this is three diodes, but there's the LEDs now with four or eight diodes that you could wire I haven't seen the eight yet. those together, and I think someone's selling them on FX. Uh -huh. um, Shoot, can you imagine how bright that is? Are they bright? I, I mean, mean I, I, they I, I've, I've heard that, like, it's the best out there because, um, wow. like, let's say you want, uh, like, it's, it's, it's R, R, G, G, B, B, whatever, whatever. Two of each. Yeah, so if you want that, like, deep red, like, you can actually get the deep red because you can utilize this RGB LED for all your other colors, but you could actually have those two dye going for the red and have a just, powerful just red. Just the red. Whereas normally, you know, people want a powerful red, they have to get, like, you know, uh, just a dedicated red or mm -hmm. or just deal with having one die basically yeah. now i have one saber at home that I, I think i was telling recently about it that it's it's one of my older builds and i have a uh a, it's got an led lead engine in it that they were called it's actually a quad led mm. um and this one had uh, red like green blue and i think it was white that i bought um i don't have the white hooked up but i do have that set up on a petit crouton 3.0 so it has three sound fonts in it and, and I also have the CEX on that. Mm. So what I did was, you know, my main channel is like the red, and then the, uh, the alternate channels through the CEX gives you two more channels. So mm. I had the blue and the green. So I'm able to color mix that between the three using the rice. That's awesome, yeah. You know, on demand. But my downfall, and, and I was, wasn't real happy with it, I don't think it's very bright. Um, when, when, I, when I use the Sabre, and I'm using the same blades, just the color just doesn't get to the uh, end. It kind of washes out. And are you talking about single color, or are you talking about like when you even try to like mix? like I've I've mixed like I'll I'll go with like a purple mm. where I'll put like the red and the red on that LED only goes to seven hundred, um, whereas the the blue and the green can go to a thousand, mm -hmm. um, and uh, basically I'll push the red to a seven hundred and a blue to to a thousand, and it still doesn't reach anywhere near like in my Graflex here. I just have one single Cree, mm -hmm. which is blue, and it doesn't get anywhere near as bright as that single. Mm. So I think either either possibly I have something hooked up wrong, or I'm not getting full power out of it, or it's just, I don't know, maybe the LED isn't as bright as I thought it would yeah, be. Yeah, like the those older uh, LEDs aren't. It isn't older. I built it about two years ago. Yeah. yeah. Um, do you want to show your photon blade in your yeah, green saver? Because that, sure. that's something that you know we've talked a lot. Let's about. talk about yours first, because you did the string blade. Okay, with so, the photon um, yellow. I have. I think I made a video on that one or two, um, which is the twelve millimeter white. So to show white in with the what with the photon blade, that what that would look like. It basically comes out like a greeny yellow, more more yellow than anything. And I don't think you saw this. But for like a second or two before, yeah, it was over the other day. He, yeah, he, he was playing with it before, but I, I'm just seeing it first time tonight. Um, so this one has uh, 28 gauge wires in it, which uh, on the next one that I make, yeah. I'm actually going to go for 30 gauge wires and try to hide them a little more because on the lower settings uh, on this saber, I can see like when my eyes focus in, I could see. Um, where the LED separation is and some, some shadows and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, it doesn't pick up on camera. No, they're not gonna be able to tell on camera. Yeah. It's like pretty pretty bright. And like, you know, if you if you stand back or you look in a mirror, um, it, it's almost like you start to realize that it, it's it's like hurting it's hurting you to focus on that crap. But uh, I'm gonna see if this other thing works. The same thing. Okay, um, now this this font here is, is set to the maximum drive of this uh, high capacity battery pack and crystal focus. 
and it was actually tripping the PCB uh, when it's fully charged. So I, I think I charged this last night. It might it might trip the PCB and actually turn off. But this is this is the brightest um, it could be. And when when it was working at the highest setting here, and it it also um, is a yeah. It's like it's like it's trip. It's tripping the PCB on the on the maximum drive. But for, it actually, for those guys who don't know, the PCB is a little circuit that if you get too much power thrown back into the lithium ion batteries, they're possible they explode. Yeah. So, so what the PCB does, it's almost like a circuit breaker you'd see in your home. Yeah. It pops, so this way the battery doesn't cause damage or anything like that. And he can be reset. All he does yeah. is he I'm puts the, uh, the, the kill uh, plug in, kill, and resets yeah, it. Kind of reset it. And what I what I learned is. That's really just because the battery is uh, throwing a super high amount of voltage right to start when you take it off the charger. This one is like 8.19. Um, so it's almost like a full, you know, like it, it's it's a lot more than it's supposed to be. Um, but what I can do is like when I use the battery for a little while, brings it down a little bit. Uh, yeah, then I can actually go back to that font that is maximum drive and it, it'll work and I play I'm like oh my god it's crazy because uh, at that level you can't really see those problems that I was, that I was telling you about so much um, but on these on these lower levels you can the LEDs aren't uh, I actually show in my other video how bright uh, each LED is at like 3.5 volts and uh, it's you can't even look at it so at the at the power that it's supposed to be optimally driven, I don't think you would be able to see any any imperfections. But as you can see, these are the yeah you can see the wires like, running through. Yeah, so it's like six is right here, and then five, then four, and then it gets a little harder to, to see. But on the next one, um, I'm gonna try to make that less noticeable because I, I kind of think that that has potential. The super bright, like 12 oh, yeah. millimeter, yeah. it's kind of amazing. It's kind of crazy that yeah. like amazingly know, bright. So, well, here's, here's the photon blade that I just got in. Um, and this is just a uh, standard, the, the photon blade. And I have a single, I didn't tape it in there yet so I can show this. I have a, a single layer of Corbin wrap in there, which comes from uh, TCSS. And that's the wrap that gives it a little bit of a, an inner core going up the saber. Um, and right now I just have an older model bullet tip. I'm, just taped it on. I'm kind of mm. waiting until they uh, they At come out with photon those tip, the photon yeah. tips, which yeah. look nice. Aren't they already out or no? Uh, no, I, I saw them posted suited. about it, but I thought, yeah, when I so, saw them posted, I thought they would. They, that was the announcement. I bet you that it's they were only out. days. It's probably a day. I'm or hoping. Wait, so, well, this is a this is the the green. This is the green um, uh, XPE copper two, XPE two copper, die running. Two die running, and with this, it almost has like a lime green color to it in person. Turn, turn that on. See now you're running and now you're running a white. It's a it's a white LED, where I'm actually running a a green LED behind the photon, and we all know of course you're supposed to use the blue. Right. But the uh, the blue you know we're playing we're playing here just to to mix and match and see what we come up with. Um, I kind of like the green yeah, on there. It's, 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 it seems to me to be a true green. It's like an electric green almost. You know, it's kind of neat looking. But just for, for fun, what I did, I have here, I have my, uh, my Graflex Saber that I built. And just so you guys see the difference, this is the Graflex Saber, and in here I have a Royal Blue single, single LED. So you can kind of see that. It's got a nice Royal Blue hue to it. And let's take that off. And now we'll put the Photon in. Because you're supposed to use the photon with a blue LED. Mm. That's kind of like a, it's kind of like a funky photon almost. Yeah, that's more photony uh, than than either mine or yours with the green in it. Yeah. But I still see some kind of blue. I see the blue core going emitter. up there. Yeah, uh, I was just yeah, gonna say it's like core. a deep core blue. It's like a deep core blue, but it, it gives off like a mint. Yeah, and what, green color. I like what, it though. one of the things I like about the photon blade, no matter where you look at it, that edge, like right now I'm looking yeah. at it and I'm seeing the edge here and here. You're looking at it, you're probably seeing the edge here up and down my yeah. fingers right here. But you get that aura to it that you don't okay. get with the regular shape. Right, that know? is, you know, that is weird. And like I, I do want to, um, 
I want to get some insight into what's going to make a good blue photon. When that, I'm, I'm sure that it's, it's around the corner. Um, I, I wonder what, what light is going to make the, the good blue. Mm. And I think that that's going to look crazy. Now, let's see Gabe turn on his... It's a different tone of blue than what yeah, you just yeah. showed. Yeah, turn yours on. Let's then, put this photon into your saber. Like, turn on... We didn't do that Turn yet. it on now since it's blue. So this is like the... More of a cyan blue or a sky blue. Yeah, it looks like you're running the blue and, the, and a little bit of the white in there. Yeah, this this font probably has like both blue dye and then like the, the white probably at 480 or something like that yeah. out of a possible 1100 or, or Let's whatever. Let's put the photon blue in there. This is something until tonight, until I saw it. So I saw you guys do this. Yeah, because most of I your sa all, all all Anthony sabers are string blades, where Gabe and I tend to use the, uh, the multi yeah, that, that's, that's, that's a little cool. bit nicer. Like more of a mint, yellowy now, mint. Oh. And and I'm not seeing that dark blue center core. I'm right. seeing it looks like a Why green. Why is that? Well, because I think you have more white. And that's a that's a richer blue. Oh, okay. That's right. a royal blue. Where his is a blue I'll blue. I'll have to switch the sound font on here that has Try the deeper blue. Try it. Switch it up. Thrasher so, number so you five. Go to the other blue. Thrasher, you said? Yeah. Which is on three. I see. Thrasher font. That's more like a true photon, like like I saw on my stream day, I think, right? I'm, I'm seeing more of a blue core in that one as well. Mm, I, yeah, I see a, some kind of line running up and down. But that's, that's really, that's really nice looking. Yeah. And I think once, nice. these, once these tips are in stock... Oh, it's just going to make it that much um, closer. It's not going to... It's not going to... Uh, I love this font. <laughs> but t tell us about that font, man. So, all I know about this font is... Um, Alan from uh, Vader's Vault... Alan did Johnson. The, ...did the uh, guitar riffing on that, and I, I forget who else worked on, on that font. He actually um, played it. Yeah. I don't know if it's Nova Star that, that made that with him or I, I don't know, but um, it's available on Saber Font. And I'm definitely buying it. It's, it's so awesome. I think it's. It's funny because Gabe's actually a musician, and so am I. That's what I thought of. Like I've seen <laughs> with the pictures of guitars and stuff like that, so I thought that was cool. And I always think that this, if you have a good two watt speaker. Um, Brings it out. It, it really good font for that. Actually, the flash right there was yellow. <laughs> <laughs> what is that? What was that that he was playing? <laughs> he, he was just playing like a little Jimi Hendrix. No, no, no. Like, I mean, like, what, what what triggered that? What movement uh, triggered force that? Effect. That was force. It oh, it's different time. forces. How many force effects does this have? Two. On? Two. I think the seven point five is. I can see, I, I can see actually uh, his white yeah. LED is causing it to be like uh, a yellow. Yeah, push, push the rock up. Yeah, it pops mm. more yellow. See, so Gabe, like the cool thing is, is if if these new photon blades come out, like you see, I don't know if people really realize like the full extent of what the what the photon means because the photon means that Gabe now has a BBW LED. So he has ability to do blue blades and white blades and anything in between. So light, light blue. Now with the green photon blade, he has ability to have, because it opt, it's optimized for blue. So he could have like almost any shade of green photon with yellow flash on clash. Um, say for instance, the next blade comes out and it's going to be purple and it's reactive off a of blue LED. Now you can have purple. Yeah, you right? just by so switching you, the blade. Yeah, yeah, so you you only have one. Yeah. You only have one color in your saber right now. But what if the red photon blade comes out and it and it maybe it looks yellow, maybe it looks purple. But when it's ignited with the blue, I mean, I'm just I'm just guessing. But um, thinking ahead, forward thinking. Yeah. So you never know, like when they put out these other chemical blades, um, that saber with just blue and white could maybe like. Maybe white is optimal for the purple, so he gets he just tunes up his font because he has he a white. He actually has the one white LED. In yeah, so he can pump off. that up, add a little blue for some brightness, and then have the purple. I mean, I don't know how that if that's how it's going to work. Yeah, but, um, it's possible. It's feasible. Yeah, that's kind of crazy. That would be awesome.
Very cool so stuff. It's around the corner. They yeah. already got this. So. Because right now you could um, you can have the photon blade in and tune your white up and have a yellow blade. You're in having yellow, right? Because that, that's kind of how you saw mine yeah. working. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah exactly that's kind of crazy. Works. Very cool stuff. Let's talk about that. Your bell? droid. Yeah, my bell? Your droid. No, your oh, the droid, droid collar. collar. <laughs> All right, so, um, you know, I, I like to go to uh, flea markets or um, little knick-knack shops. My wife and I go a lot on Saturdays, and, and I'm, I'm hoping one of these days to find a Graflex in one of these mm. shops and pick it up for three bucks, you know. <laughs> um, I actually found a little, a little old flash gun, and it was very tiny. It was kind of about yay big yay high and I actually was able to transform that into a version of a Yoda saber that I have at home I don't have any electronics or anything but it looks nice it's sitting up on my shelf and um, so long story short this this week I stopped into a Photoshop because I do a little bit of a photography bug and the Photoshop had a lot of antique stuff up and I found this which uh, is not the exact unit that I think was used in a lot of the filming but I think that there were a few people that did use this version. Mm. And it's uh, basically, um, it's called an Ellens and West Wetzar. It's made in Germany. And it's actually a, a, like a slave flash unit that you could use for the old flash guns, mm. um, which is what they actually just... Use a lot of camera parts, huh? Yeah, it's a lot of camera parts for, for uh, the Sabre <laughs> stuff in the original. Um, or originally, you know, Han had one strapped to his belt. It was a little bit different than this one. Um, but they are I, cool looking. Yeah, it's a cool looking piece. Now, did that make any noise in the movie? Like when he put, did he push a button? No, I don't think so. I think he just pushed the button. He was like, "R two, we need you." Oh, okay, because yeah. I was gonna say if if it did anything, you could always use. I mean, if they, you know, when they're available again, or if you have an little, old sound card like a yeah, nano a card or in there, and you could fit a speaker of, in there, and it yeah, is hollow in there. You make, could make a sound font. That you just could put some cool stuff in there with a little button on it. You know, yeah. very cool, very possible. You know. So if people want to um, see what that would look like, they can just Google droid caller. Yeah, you can you can Google, Google uh, droid caller on uh, Google, and uh, you'll see a couple different ones of these. And I actually found one that actually has this same one on there that somebody actually labeled all the individual parts. Like if it was actually a droid caller, mm. what the parts would do. Like this little guy down here was the recharge port, mm. which I think that actually just uh, is what... Attached that, to the camera. That was attached the, the, the power to the camera. So when the camera flashed, this would flash too. And it had a uh, it had a bar with the, one of those flash umbrellas mm. up here that I took that off immediately. And I'm like, oh, I got a droid caller, you know? <laughs> so it was a little neat piece. It advertised as a droid caller? Um, no, they actually had it advertised as a flash, you know, a camera flash. And, you know, a lot of the camera guys, they don't know what this stuff is, you know. Um, some do. And they actually, you know, it's funny if you actually go into a camera store and, you know, if you find a Graflex, which is the, as I say, the piece of resistance, you know. Gra I was looking at Graflexes tonight and uh, they were going for about seven fifty to $800 on eBay. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, like I I've seen and heard stories of people going into a, a camera shop and be like, that's that's a lightsaber. I want to buy that. And it could say like fifty dollars on it. And if the guy behind the counter hears that you're going to turn it into a lightsaber, they won't sell it to you oh. because they're trying to keep it for that antique hmm. camera equipment value. Oh, I see. But uh, they won't turn it into. They they won't. They get mad. They, like this is actually a real Graflex. <laughs> I bought this about fifteen years ago off of eBay. When I bought this, it was about I think I paid about three hundred and thirty dollars for this. It was a little birthday present that my wife got me, and it sat on my shelf for the longest time. And then, uh, you know, I started seeing that you could get all the parts on TCSS, and I gutted it, and I threw away all those cheap little plastic parts inside. And that, it is that were original. They were original, yeah, original. Great. I actually didn't throw them away. I have them in like a little cup, but they're they're like a nightmare to take apart and put back together. So I don't think I can put them back together as good as I am at this kind of stuff. But uh, you uh, you mount a different um, blade holder inside the tube mm -hmm. from uh, TCSS, and that allows you to set up like in, and it holds the LED in there, and like the one holds the blade. blade yeah, holds the blade inside. And so and uh, and I actually I think I've shown this here before, but I might as well throw it out here. This saber actually has my own little crystal chamber in it. Nice. Crystal in there. I bought that crystal chamber was uh, was from um, 
What's that site called? The three D printing site? Shapeways. 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 Yeah. And uh, I customized it a little bit. Didn't work a hundred percent for me, so I cut some parts off it. I added some more parts. These front brass tubes are not original. Um, these were my original Graflex pins from up here, but they were kind of old mm -hmm. and tarnished, and I didn't want to th just throw them away. So I mounted them into here, just to give it some kind of funny look to it. And uh, this is just a couple, couple nails that I bent just to give it that. Yeah, little, I like that look. I remember when you yeah, first that little, showed me that. Yeah, you know, like it's pulling the power off the, uh, off the thing. Here. Hold this up That's here. pretty awesome. For, yeah, it's for, pretty cool. For, you know, coming up with that yourself and doing it. At See home. if I can get that to focus in. If I turn it off, you'll actually see it a little better. There's the crystal chamber. There's the original Graflex pins that used to be up here. I wanted a nice new shiny Graflex pins, so I put them up there. And I found a crystal at a uh, crystal shop, one of the malls or something like that. And I built my own crystal chamber. I'd really like a Yoda, but we know what they go for. The Yoda, <laughs> oh, Yoda crystal Yoda chamber, chassis, the yellow yeah. chassis. An amazing piece. I'd love to maybe eventually get a Yoda chassis mm -hmm. and maybe put it back into here because I mean this is a, a mint Graflex. It's in great shape. Um, one of the things I like, the uh, the Graflex, the the piece that you get from the save, custom saber shot to turn this into a lightsaber has a hole in here so that you can use their thumb screw as a blade retention screw. Right. I left the hole there and I filed down the inside. This is an original clear, they call it the glass clear eye. glass eye. Um, so when I turn my glass eye on, I don't know if you can see it, oh, yeah, it kind of lights up. Lights up right there. Show that on camera too. And it lights up right there. That's kind of neat, you know. Figured that's like a little power port, mm -hmm. power escape port, you know. <laughs> Awesome. So yeah, this is this is my uh, original Graflex. I love it. So you had to add the bubbles, the bubble strip to that, or that's yeah. like part of a Graflex, and you get it actually graphics. funny. Uh, for those in the know, the bubble strip card, which is this piece right here, is a card that came out of a calculator, a right? calculator from the 1970s, and the one on the um, the the original Luke Saber had seven bubbles. It was a seven segment bubble LED. Mm -hmm. Um, I actually was, was cruising through a, a, uh, a flea market and I found a similar version of that. It was a Texas instrument. I forget the model number. It was a texture instrument. And, and I bought the, the, uh, the calculator. I think it was like 50 cents, um, where people are buying these calculators for some big money now just to rip them open and get their little bubble strip. Mm. So mine actually is a legit. nine segment. Mm. Um, but I figured it's close enough to the real deal that was originally on the George Lucas one that they made in the movie. So I have a real nine bubble instead of the seven bubble. Mine is nine. I actually it's, think that looks better. I'm not a huge fan of the uh, you don't like the seven episode four because of the bubble strip. I like more so when they went to Empire Strikes Back. They use the card. They have the card, and then like the uh, like the Anakin. Episode three has like a like circuit a, card, a brass um, circuit. Yeah, I think that looks th that looks cool. But a lot of people like the bubble one to match the episode four. Like if you're going for episode four, uh, don't tell that. Uh, don't tell the anti camera guys. But I drilled holes in the bottom to let the sound out, <laughs> and that's a real Graflex. They would probably want to cut my head. Off. Take, oh, take a look. Look God. close at that. You can see it. You can see all the Graflex writing on there. Oh, yeah. And I just punched some holes in there and let the sound through. <laughs> I didn't do a neat job of it. I was kind of. I also yeah. like the Empire version because Empire Strikes Back version with the um, the, the rivets in the in the strips. Yeah, that 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 hold on the. I do like that, and eventually I would love to get one like that. But for me, this is the saber of the way it looked as it first appeared. Yeah. In episode. The first time anyone four. saw a lightsaber. First time this. anyone ever saw a lightsaber the when granddaddy when all. Ben Kenobi <laughs> handed yeah, the saber to Luke and said, "You know, your father wanted you to have this." Um, that's as damn close as you can get. Yeah, man. You know, this is awesome. That's as damn close as you this can get to actually having right into the real. But, uh, it's funny you know? we're, we're talking about this now because on the way here I said to Harris I said it's funny how just this one saber here out of this one thing so many have evolved with so many designs and shapes and Think sizes and you know color crystals and blades and stuff like that. 
but just out of this, it's just amazing. The world of sabers that's mm. that's that it's at our disposal now. <laughs> out of one little saber, you know, <laughs> little granddaddy saber, the one that started it all, man. So yeah, I think every uh, person that's into saber should should have a, yeah. a Graflex, and if you can't afford a Graflex, something similar to it whether it's imitation but something to have at home on the shelf and just say that's the one that started it all you know mm. there's there's actually right here was it parks is coming out with the new one or parks made a graph there's, yeah, there's, there's a it. bunch of uh companies that have a uh, sort of graphlex uh copy or or a version of, of, of a of a graphlex like my favorite one that's coming out soon is uh i guess people have been waiting for it for a year or more um, I'm not on the run list. I'm not buying one, but I, I sort of uh, love it. I think it's awesome. And it's the uh, Ace Rocket Orbital Machining Skinny Flex, which is like a Graflex look, but he made it a little bit... A little skinnier? Skinnier, and I think there's there's differences. I'm not totally aware of the differences, but uh, it looks really, really cool. And I guess for, for people that want to have that grip of... Everyone's going more towards the slimline sabers. So this is uh, the MHS sabers are actually. What's the outside diameter on the MHS stuff? I'm not sure. Is it? Uh, I want to say the Graflex is a little bit thicker. It right, is. it's and a like, little bit thicker. Like uh, Gabe was saying, uh, that inspired everyone to make different types of sabers. I mean, I that inspires me to make all my sabers. Um, as bulky and uncomfortable as they can be to hold. <laughs> you like them a little thicker. <laughs> yeah, because like that's the one that started it all, and it sucks to hold. Um, so, it's, and, and then add these thick thick grips to the yeah. bottom of it. Yeah, it's very it looks so cool hold. and looks so like machine. It does look amazing. Machinistic is that a word? Like that that it's it's. Um, <laughs> it looks like something powerful, something yeah. tough. You yeah. Know, it, it looks like a piece like, of high tech science fiction. Here's one also that you have. Graflex. That's the Anakin. Yeah, so this is a JQ Anakin that I think we, we've uh, shown before. This is supposed to be from the movies that took place before yeah. Harris's Graflex. But you're right, in the be... sense you got the you got the right uh, choice of words to say, it, you know, it, like it looks machine type, uh, robotic, futuristic, mm. however you want to put like it. It could be a part of the Terminator, like yeah, one of the Terminator's yeah, elbows or something yeah. like that. But that's something that's always intrigued me about this, uh, the Graflex looking uh, saber. I, I, again, I prefer this, for example. Uh, you want to you like the it, choke. Because you want to swing you you spin, spin it around, around. blah, you blah, like blah. The choke. But at the same time, this feels like a saber when you have it. Mm. Without spinning anything. Because it feels like something out of the future. Mm. You know I mean? Alright, here. which one's heavier? I like the weight. Probably the JQ because it, they, more in they've it? chromed it. So chroming, I think, is going to add some weight. Think it's a little heavier? It's hard to say. Almost the same, right? I like weight in a saber. Yeah, I don't know. I think maybe the same. <laughs> I didn't think yours would be as heavy, but I would have thought mine with the chrome would be heavier, yeah. but I don't know. I can't tell. Yeah. It's, it's possible mine's a hair heavier. I don't know. Yeah, yours feels a little bit heavier. They yeah. both got their battery packs in there. Yeah. Yeah. And with that, mine you have two, two double... Head. There's two rechargeable double A's in here? Yeah, they're double A size, but it's really 14. Okay, I'm running a 3.7 18650 in here. Okay. So it's thick. The, the battery in here is They're probably really comparable thick. as far as but the weight. But the battery, where's your, your batteries are down here more in the handle, where my batteries, I mounted mm. up here into the uh, the body, also with the um, with the card up here. Mm -hmm. Where's the card in this, up more to the top? Um, yeah, I think in the very center. Yep. Or maybe, trade? maybe maybe more towards the top after <laughs> that chamber in the middle. Want to trade? Want to trade? <laughs> Just mix them up, he's not going to be able to tell which one's which. I'll never notice. He'll <laughs> never notice. <laughs> and it has the rumble motor in it. Mm. So oh, that's badass. Yeah, it the rumble motor. vibrates. Now, one thing I'm sorry I did, I went for the royal blue in here. I kind of feel like I, maybe eventually if I ever redo it, mm. I'll put a true blue in there. I went for the royal blue. You like the blue more like the and Yeah, like, like a more realistic yeah. blue, like the blue that's actually in there. This one has... Uh, Sort of a blue that's similar to that. Fire that it? up. It's pretty, pretty similar. Maybe, Pull the blade maybe plug this out. is a hair lighter. Pull the blade plug out. Maybe this is a hair lighter. It's a little bit lighter blue. But it's still not uh, 
like you would call this royal in comparison to Gabe's more sky blue type of saber. What what that what's in there? What LEDs in there? Uh, it's a BBW, but as far as like the what's it? So it's running blue blue right now. Yeah, and this this is a CF five, so it does not have a CEX. It's not capable right. of running a CEX. This but, is running uh, a single LED, a single uh, Cree, mm. a single LED. Cree. I'm thinking these blues might be in parallel. This is like a super bright saber, um, and then the white is just used for the flash. Nice stuff. Awesome. Yeah, I'm thinking about maybe getting in line for a Yoda chassis and putting a Yoda chassis into this bad boy. Yeah, they always seem to sort of uh, pass me by when I, I mean, it's not that I'm really, really looking for one, uh, but usually when I notice them on the forum, they're already sold out, right? Is that, is that how, how you sort of see it? What do they go for? Do you remember? I thought that they were they were really reasonable. I thought, I don't remember. Was it like something like 300? I was going to say three, between three and five or something like um, that. And I thought that they just, it came with like everything you needed. Yes, it does. And it was Well, it, it doesn't come with that upper, that blade holder piece that you okay, want to Okay, so you need your real Graflex. You need. Or a fake Graflex. Blade or, holder or a piece. replica Graflex. Yoda kit. And then, you, I don't know if it comes with batteries and stuff like that. And a card. That. Yeah. Sound card. So it depends what sound card you put in it. Mm. I'm running a nano biscuit in here. Okay. This is only a nano biscuit. I yeah, I think you could probably take yeah. full advantage of the Yoda chassis. I don't know if you need a PC or higher or what. Or what I don't you know, think, to, I, I think, yeah, you may be He has like right. multiple you accents right. are on there or something like yeah. that. He, he might have it like set up like that where he has the two LEDs, like one going off for uh, the flash on clash and mm -hmm. stuff like that. Or you could do like the blade mimicking um, LED sort of like that was like a choice that I had when I was wiring up this you can take one of the button LEDs and put it to a certain pad the, the number one pad and you can then choose um, different different options but I figured when, when he was holding it and stuff like that it wouldn't it wouldn't really be noticeable I thought those buttons would be kind of covered you know what I mean like it wouldn't really be noticeable to have like button like flickering so I just didn't do that I mean back back to his shaver again while you're, you're on the topic I was having problems with the PLI. Did you rewrap the PLI, or I had it wrapped in a uh, yeah? A like I completely trim. like took it apart. You opened it. You got it, and then just like I te uh, uh, tested every part with my machine. I think when when Gabe was like dropping it off, I just kind of took it all apart and then tested uh, each individual part. Once I found out that the PLI did work, um, then I just tried to think of different. Uh, way to mount it, you know, like the, what, what did you, did you wrap it in more slender. heat shrink? Yeah, so I just put it in, I think it was like three quarter inch uh, heat shrink, melted that around it, and then uh, did you cut open the LEDs? That's what I did. I took a razor blade once I heat shrank it. Mm. it no, I, I left it completely sealed. Oh. Um, and then uh, obviously the two, the two wires were like running off of that. Um, I sealed that up. So under 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 that screen, there's still that clear. Yeah. Okay. See, I didn't have that because mm. I didn't have the clear heat shrink. You were, I only you had the black like, heat shrink. It's a black that kind of wrapped around it. it, it I wrapped like it around it, and then I took a, a, an exacto knife and I cut around the LEDs to bring the LEDs back mm. out. Yeah. So maybe that's why. Maybe the LEDs were touching the metal, mm. and and it was shorting out on me. Mm. Mm. Very nice job, though. Nice. Let me see this bad boy. That's right. <laughs> Fulfill your destiny. Yeah, see that? That PLI through the clears, it looks just as good as it didn't have the PLI, the clear mm. on it, yeah. Yeah. And then there's like um like I, w I was telling you uh earlier about how I keep all the junk around and, and stuff like that, plastic containers and plastic wraps. Sometimes if you don't want to use the any type of screen, like I have a couple more little screen parts that were silver, but I just thought you know the bronze looked yeah, let me see better on on his. But you could always uh, forego any type of screen thing and use some kind of plastic. You could find something that has ribs, uh, packaging that has little bubbles. Like even your your like you said, you found your bubble strip in a calculator. If you had a bubble strip that was uh, maybe smaller bubbles in a row mm -hmm. you could you know Pop that on put it. that underneath and that would that would diffuse the light and look cool too because like i like the dimmer lights on a hilt if possible i like 
I like them dim. Here's a question for you. When you were putting in the two control boxes, I had a problem. They were buttoned into each other on the inside. It was mm-hmm. like fighting for space. You ran into a little of that or no? Um, there, yeah. Well, uh, the first thing I did was to chop the um, the legs off of all the parts in there. Oh. Um, so when I, when I did go to put it in, it was still tight and things still touched, uh, but everything was, you know, insulated, so... Um, All right, this means don't take it apart. Exactly. <laughs> I don't tend to. <laughs> so I want to show you guys, like, a really special saver I just got in the mail. Um, Ooh, show and tell time. A little treat. Oh, look at it. He's got the special heavy-duty case for this guy, too. I thought that was a gun case. <laughs> I just <can> shoot everybody. <laughs> um, awesome. All right, so... I didn't have time to do like a review on this saber yet. Um, I just got it and kind of kind of had difficulty with the shipping getting it here. It came all the way from um, Britain, I think. Tatooine it came from. <laughs> so this is a JSK number three from Bombarda, um, the IRA and the FX Saber Forum. Um, so you guys. Wow. Take, take a look at like almost don't want to touch this. it. It's uh, it's so shiny. It's chromed, uh, which Bombarda had a problem, uh, chroming it and coming out with all the parts fitting together properly wow. when chrome. But he had to redo it a couple times, and he made two of them like this. I think Shady Canuck on the FX Saber forms and the IRA has the other chromed version, but there's five of these in total. Love the pommel. And the pommel's awesome. The pommel insert is just the best. Um, Amazing. He polished up the brass. The brass, the yeah, parts. beautiful. And um, it's, I think let's see. he made a really cool. I'm endangering the mission. I shouldn't. Really cool on. kill key that the you just switch? turn. And you pull it out. Yeah, you you can pull it out, but you just you it, you could leave it in or pull it out and it still works. It just works on a turning motion, which is pretty neat. So but it, it, right it here, won't work. See, JSK3, yeah. which is a Jaina solo. I th- I, I'm going to screw up the name. I should just look it up, but it's like... Kubayasco. So dang shiny, I can't even read it. Something run. Let me look it up. JSK3. Okay, so, I mean, as much as I play with this stuff, where's the power button? Is it the box? Um, it's actually the LEDs. And one of the reasons I thought, you know, I wanted to bring out the Saber right now is because we were just talking about dim... Uh, LED. So this is fantastic that I, he got it to be dim. I don't know if it was on purpose or by accident, but it's actually great that each button is. A the light. LEDs are actually the buttons. Yeah, and they're not like so bright that they're blinding. Well, that's resistor. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's just knowing your stuff and putting okay, proper Okay, so yeah, he's on. he's an expert. Yeah. Um, yeah. His, name, his name is Gary. <laughs> and what card is in this? That is the CFLS um, that I sent him so I can show you guys with a blade in it. Yeah, this is a... Um, I'm endangering the mission. I shouldn't have come. That's badass. Hold, hold that, man. Did it come with the case? Uh, no, this this case I got with my Koran horn, which I no longer have. I got this um, from Mad Cow, and I just thought it was an awesome lightsaber case. So. Put this That's a great belly plug. That would look good in my, my Graflex. Super loud. Badass. Now, is that for a uh, string blade? Yeah. Let me show you with the... And it works the same with your DIN plugs, right? I'm guessing they set that up on purpose. Uh, yeah, I sent him a DIM plug. Oh, you sent it to him? This is the only one he did with the CFLS. Like, a, you know, I had to uh, beg and plead. Gary was nice enough to make it for me with the CFLS. Uh, it didn't really take much uh, begging, actually. He's very accommodating. And um, he just set this up with, you know, because it's basically the same size as a CF7 or whatever. So he was going to make a couple with CF7 or whatever people wanted. So I didn't think be that different to put the CFLS in it. He had to make some modifications because it's a little longer. And, uh, you know, he had to basically learn for the first time how to hook up one uh, one of these. So thank you, Gary, because this Good is work. absolutely awesome. Um, so, yeah, try this. I didn't tighten the blade in, but if you don't swing it too crazy, it'll be all right. But um, 
So, um, I actually sent Gary a purple blade to work it out uh, with this saber and to test. But um, and Jane Solo used a purple blade, but she also used blue blade, and I think blue just really goes with this really, really well. So that's right. That thing is amazing. Yeah, like I'm not. You barely not, touch these buttons. Yeah, it's it's awesome. And the power button is actually firm enough where you're not gonna kind of hit it accidentally. Yeah. yeah. What did you do? Was there some kind of a, a sequence of buttons you had to hit to fire it up? I noticed you hit the green. Oh no! I first. think I was just mistakenly hitting green oh, okay. to activate, but and the green is actually. I, I just got it, so I have. I have it. I'm not too familiar. So the top one is the act is the auxiliary the button. Around, yeah. Yeah. Okay, so this is called the Koto Buklaya replica. Koto Buklaya replica. Uh, so it's it's off of a toy uh, that Gary took the dimensions from the toy and it's a toy of Jaina Solo holding this lightsaber and um, she's in a, like a rebel pilot uniform which I guess is a take on some comics need, they had in Japan show that or something like that um, so let's see if you guys can that's can actually nice. check this out so that's Amazing. the lightsaber so that's actually an action figure that he took that from? Yeah, now I don't completely understand if this is uh, something to do with like manga or anime or where this comes from, a comic book. Um, but when I, when I saw this, this lightsaber uh, that Gary was prototyping, I just thought that um, it was really, really well designed. It looked really nice and it looked to me like... Um, Jason Solo's what? lightsaber. So this is supposed to be like her brother's her brother. lightsaber. And I got this from LDM. This is the Rebellion Run. Jason Solo. You can check out my video on this one from like a year and a half or two years ago. Michael, actually, um, Chewbacca on the FX Saber forums did my install on this. And I thought that the Jaina went really, really well with the uh, LDM Jason Saber. Are you going to display them together as brother and sister? Yeah, so we got this stand right here yeah. with uh, the, the, the two parts, but Gary is from Florida on the uh, forums who made the saber, he actually included a Jaina Solo custom stand that I didn't put together yet, it's like one of these um, cells here. That's fascinating how loud this is. Oh, that's actually one thing I wanted to point out, I mean Gary brought it up in some of his videos, um, but this saber, like I think it, it's it could be like one of the best lightsabers out right now. Uh, it has like amazing, amazing sound. Yeah. Super slender. I'm wondering how you which get is it something to sound I don't that normally uh, care for the super slender mm -hmm. saber, but this one in particular, it's great to spin. Um, we got our greasy fingerprints all over. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's actually you know it's it's super easy to to clean because it's chrome, so it's not like uh, Just fingering up. Uh, aluminum and getting that like that that black uh, that yeah. kind of residue. Um, this chrome, if anyone has an opportunity to get their saber chromed, it's really cool because you just take a polishing cloth and and really quick it's super shiny again. Um, the other cool thing about chrome uh, is like I said before, I thought it was heavy, but actually on on a thin lightsaber like this without too many grooves and stuff, um, it doesn't add too much weight. I don't think because I actually asked Gary, I said is it is it a lot heavier? Sh show the pommel. And on that, I, I love the. Uh, I did. I, I did. The, uh, the pommel, you, you the, the there, pommel yeah. brass so, um, piece is just amazing. It's actually my favorite pommel oh, insert. It. Uh, it's an awesome looking pommel. The pommel insert, I should it's, say. The it's brass great. Piece. Yeah, I would, I would buy ten of those if they oh went God, for sale. Yeah. They're they're awesome. It's beautiful um, brass pommel, brass box. The box here. is awesome too. And he made uh, cares not to have sharp edges on the saber. He took a lot of care to design the. Uh, custom uh, port for the recharge and um, make that have the specialized kill key that you just turn um, so yeah I think that that's pretty much all I want to say about this I just want to show you guys like how awesome. how uh, and, and it's, it just shows the that you know as as much as Anthony builds and sabers for other people you're still sewing the lightsabers that you buy them from other people oh, yeah. as well like in you know, uh, basically the ones that I make, I like to try to 
give those to people, sell them to people uh, for their use, and it's it's sort of the opposite of like what it, what a real Jedi would do, like make their own and just hold on to it. <laughs> I like to get get the ones I make to in other people's hands, and ones that I admire, I want to get them in my Michelle. hands. Sure. Um, so it's beautiful. That, that's that kind of this. Awesome. Yeah. So I think for for anyone on the run, uh, the five or so people. Um, I think this turned out like just way better than anyone could have imagined Amazing. because when it's finally in your hands, um, it's it feels like one of the one of the greatest savers out there. You know, so beautiful. That's that's a true work of art, man. That is. He really took his time with that. Love that. <laughs> yeah. So he you know included all this stuff, including the blade plug and um, custom kill key and all the stuff to. Operate the saber was was in the box, so uh, in, including a specialized rice cable that he made. Oh wow! Um, because I guess there's a certain amount of room inside the saber, so when you open up the bottom here, is a little port that you plug the well, rice port, into, yeah, and then you, you have, the you have access a Very nice. little extension piece that he made. Yeah. So thanks, Gary. The saber is super awesome. Um, nice work, man. Nice work. And that is running a six light string six point five. Yeah, light string six. Which is uh, actually the only Plector Labs um, light string light string card available right now. I I, I hope at some point there. Well, it's, it's not even available right now. I think you know what I meant. That that has been out. Um, my hope is that they up, upgrade. You know, either Michael or or Herb will maybe bring the CF LS up to the seven standard. Uh, so dual digital sensors and all the all the goodies that the seven has maybe a twelve sound fonts. I mean, even though I don't want to get greedy, six sound fonts is plenty is really plenty for me. You know, I have a lot of films with six sound fonts. How many are on the seven five? Twelve. Ten, twelve. So you know we're just stuff. upping they're upping the ante uh, with that. Good stuff. And uh, you could you could have all your favorite sound fonts on there. Like when I'm designing what I want on my card. Uh, or like for Gabe, what I want to put on the card, there's certain ones you have to leave out when you have six, I guess. So 12, I can't imagine there'd be many that you're going to leave off yeah. of your yeah. favorites list, right? Yeah, it's really sufficient. Very cool. Very cool, very That's cool. Awesome. That's an amazing saber. Yeah, it's pretty awesome. I figured I'd, uh, because one of the things we talk about a lot is they can't ignore is open carry. I figured I'd bring this, show this off a little tonight. This is a belt, Jedi belt that I made. I went downtown to uh, Fabric Row in Center City. It's a little little area where they uh, sell all kind of fabrics. I just I bought some real leather, drew it out on a, uh, on a table and cut it out. And I put this together. I bought the studs online. I bought the buckle online. And uh, I can't believe you dyed it. It doesn't look like it was dyed. Yeah, I dyed it. It was originally like a tan piece of leather. And it's got like 10 coats. I bought that shoe polish that you like, not like in a pad, it's like in a bottle. It's got a little foam mm -hmm. applicator. Yeah, yeah. So you just squeeze the bottle and run it over. Yeah. And then just put but it, it on and let it, it dry. Does it come off on anything? No, I haven't had it come off. Oh, awesome. Yeah. So you got sort of these custom greeblies on here. Yeah, it's, um, uh, the, the, they were the uh, food capsules and uh, like medicine capsules, I think they were. They were originally pen caps. That they used. I like these. Uh, I think I showed you these from the custom Clip. saber shop. Those clips, like you yep. could get. It sort of serves a dual purpose of uh, looking cool or try purpose. Mm -hmm. Looks cool, holds this secondary belt part on Clips the belt on. Yep. more, and it holds a saber if you yep. have a D ring saber. And then I even went so far as to, you know, these are very hard to find anymore, but the original little Lady Gillette sabers, mm -hmm. uh, Lady Gillette razors. Um, that they used in the uh, saber, right? Lady Gillette saber, Lady Gillette razor that they used in the uh, first movie, The Phantom Menace. This was what Qui Gon would kind of hold on to and mm. talk as a communicator. Um, I actually, this is a real. You can buy them as uh, where somebody took this the razor mm. and kind of molded it and then made a resin replica. A resin cast. Yeah, yeah, this is actually a real. And you had to paint it black. Razor, right? yeah. I think it was pink originally. If you scratch the paint off of it, mm -hmm. it'll be pink underneath. But uh, it's a real razor. And then these are actually rivets that I glued in. I noticed the brass pieces. Yeah, and then the brass pieces the were just a couple right? little, uh, they call them acorn, acorn nuts, I think. Mm -hmm. I just added. I like and those. And there's, eventually I'll put some more doodads on it. There were some other knickknacks, you know, my work in progress, as I say. But it's neat just to have a, a Jedi belt and 
have a real Jedi communicator. Come in, come in Qui Gon. <laughs> cool stuff. And these are actually little cases. I bought these actually from the dollar like store. This, uh, you bought this leather yeah. case? Yeah, you popped them. How they pop right off? Take a look. Oh, okay. I see. They, they were uh... their cell phone cases from the dollar store. Oh, okay. I just kind of popped them on there, you know. What's in this one here? What's that? What's in this side? Uh, is there anything in there? Or is oh, it... crystal chamber plug. Crystal chamber plug. Yeah, my plug. I put it in there so I didn't forget it. Yeah, on my belt, I usually have a pouch with the Allen keys on there. Yep. I mean, you know, it's they're great at a convention because, like, I wore this to Philly Comic Con mm -hmm. last year, and that just covers if you open it up. It's Velcro. Pop that open. Yeah, you could. Just, it's so not it's Velcro. Like, it snaps. Because it's. I know. I mean, is it underneath. Part and then, no, and oh, then okay. I, I put all kind of snaps in there, and you know, this way, if I gain weight or if I lose weight or somebody wants to borrow it, it's got uh, different size adjustments on it. And then that black piece, they actually had that. Yeah, like this is how mine piece. is designed that I just got off eBay. Cover. Mine is, you know, uh, yeah. not as thick as as this. I like the thicker one, and uh, but it's got the same design except where you have snaps. It was Velcro. Mm -hmm. That's awesome, man, for coming yeah. up with that at home. Looks nice on the uh, on yeah, the whole like costumes what? put together. It looks really nice. Yeah. I've then seen, I have the uh, cover tech on there. I see the pictures of you in a costume. Yeah, it looks really looks nice. Good. Yeah, looks good. I have a uh, the the OB they call it, which is the under fabric piece that goes under the belt. Mm -hmm. um, the girl that made my uh, some of my my jet I wear was uh, Ellen two nineteen. I think she goes by a new name. I think she's called the Jedi Closet. Well, it was Eileen, and then went on, to the... I, Eileen. I was it Eileen. I think Eileen two nineteen on uh, on Etsy Etsy Etsy, mm -hmm. and uh, she made me uh, she made me my OB. Um, she made some of my tabard stuff. And she made me my robe, which the robe is just amazing. Um, but I I went a little thicker on my belt than the actual Jedi belts. I think the Jedi belts are actually about two or two and a quarter inches. I think that's about three or three and a quarter inches. Mm. Made it a little wider. Yeah, like so that. when I did the Obi, it comes up a little higher. It looks looks a little beefier on me, you know. Mm. It helps to hold my belly in. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, it's good stuff. Maybe one night we'll. We'll have some fun. I'll bring the whole costume over. Yeah, like I, we were trying to do something for Halloween. Yeah. Um, we kind of never materialized uh, in year. time for Halloween. Next year. But there's other times for dressing up, like maybe uh, I don't know about new movie time with the with the rules, but maybe I don't know, at some point. Just some so, some viewing. Of what kind of copper maybe, ideas? Maybe I see you just the, cutting uh, like a foot off of this and making a saber out of this. Yeah, I mean, well, that, that's possible. You know, I never had that much of it before, that, that length. I always just had bits. Home Depot. I think it cost me about eight, ten bucks. Mm. Not a big deal. Home Depot, they cut it for you to length. They use a pipe cutter so the ends are crimped in a little bit. But, uh, yeah. Yeah, th there was uh, one thing I wanted to try. Um, probably won't try it with that piece because I'd be covering covering it up but uh, one of the ideas like I recently got from watching a video that uh, Eastern 57 has up of uh, Lord of the Rings inspired lightsaber that he made mm. I don't know if you guys saw that but it's a it's a pretty cool like Mordor style lightsaber yeah I think I saw that one yeah and, and if you look really closely he has a couple videos on how he made it and if you look really closely in one of the videos he shows you how the uh, part of the grip on it is actually rubber um, that he, like, you know, you could imagine it working like, like on your saber as if you shrunk a piece of rubber all around this mm -hmm. and the ridges in this would, would show through. So you would have this rubberized grip. Mm -hmm. And I was, uh, I'm just enamored with that idea. I want to do that at some point. I ordered a bunch of uh, shrinkable rubber that, uh, like he said, the size in the video, I think it was like two and a half inches that he used or something. Ordered a couple different samples. Mm -hmm that I want to eventually cut something um, out of an MHS part like he did or cut shroud pieces or use tape. Um, I think he, he used tape to get some ridges underneath, you know, and then shrank his rubber over it. And, and there was some shroud pieces too. So you can imagine if you had encased this piece in rubber, then you put the shroud piece on. Actually, that would have worked here, right? Because the shroud piece had some extra leeway room. So that, that might work actually in, in conjunction with the copper, and I was just saying it might not, but if I, if I covered an MHS part in rubber with some grip areas, slapped a piece of copper, depending on what shape the uh, shroud was, that might, that might be pretty cool, especially since copper would really play off against a black, like, you know, like it's doing here. I'm actually really uh, fired up about the sound hole idea in the back. Mm. Think of that. That's a nice one idea. Yeah. 
I was gonna I was gonna put some up in here in the that. neck area, but I think it'll it'll and it'll really come through because I there think is it just would. I think it would and it, yeah. yeah I think it'll there's come just enough there bounce off there's that. enough gap in there. I think so. Yeah, I might say let's go pop a pole in here, Mary. Because what I noticed uh, with with uh, Gabe's saber was if you when I had it turned on and I was resting my finger over this, the sound was coming through the kind of PLI vibrating, and yeah. I was like, oh, it's actually it's a nice. sound hole, yeah. you know, as as well. So that that's another yeah. reason I. But thought what would be cool about this is it, like with that, the sound just comes out through the hole. With this, the sound will hit that copper piece and then reflect out. That's what I think. Yeah, I'm hoping. That's what you know think. what I mean? That's what I'm saying. So the sound will come out of here. Of it, yeah, it, like it might even it might even sound like we were talking last time about doing the. Uh, the the tool the dual speaker mm -hmm. it'll give you that uh, think the uh, the Bose sound box do you ever see those Bose yeah, sound box yeah. they only have one speaker in them yeah, yeah. but there's, there's all kind of channels like inside oh, okay. it so I'm thinking that uh, maybe we should go pop some holes in the back end of this man oh we can do it yeah Gabe okay, you want to put yeah. a um, blade in your saber and yes, we'll sir, kick this right off oh. that's yours that's your Let's do the photon. What do you say? Let's do the photon. <laughs> All right, we're going to sign off on this episode of Saber Talk. And uh, we'll, we'll see you guys next time. In the meantime, enjoy your lightsabers. And it's an exciting time for sabers, so you got to go out there and get your, uh, your high tech photon stuff and all your TCSS stuff. <laughs> All right, thanks again, everybody. This is looking really yellowy right now. <laughs> totally yellow compared to this, yeah. Maybe that's why. It's like super bright. You know what's funny? The last episode, we were talking about that first saber I had, that inflatable one, and the photon color uh, by itself that's is true. the same color as that inflatable. I still have that video on my phone because I think that video is hilarious. <laughs> Thanks for doing that again, you guys. Good show, guys. Good show. I love coming over here to hang out. Good show. Dude, I can't believe how loud that thing is. That blew my mind. That is badass. Makes me want to get that pommel. That is. Oh badass. yeah, the saber here. Jesus. Yeah. I don't think it's the pommel. I think it's the. I think it's. it's